You better not be winding me up. Let me film you. No, you. I'm I in wanna... my pajamas. You don't film me. I want to film you. <laughs> What's going on? All right. I just got Carrie out of bed. <laughs> Electric fence ain't off. The fence is off? Yeah. <gasps> One, two, three, four, five. There's five baby pigs right now. And her afterbirth. We had no idea. What? <laughs> we had no idea. She looked pregnant though. I have to go run and get Carrie now. She has no idea. And she was like, I think we need to build a fairing house. I think we got time. I think we got like six months or something like that. She's not even, she's nine months old. And the male is six months old. I can't believe it. We got babies making babies. What's the world coming to? Oh my goodness. That's her reaction uh, right now. She's seen it for the first time. <laughs> Come here, look. Is there after birth? Oh my goodness. Oh, well we were a bit late with a flowering pen. It's your fault. <laughs> Oh, good job, Mama. You need to get warm. So clearly we're new to pig farming and learning a lot quite quickly. What has been really interesting to me is how a lot of the information that you find online seems very much based on the character and behavior of commercial breeds of pigs that are kept today in confinement and how in reading that information, I was met with a lot of cautions. Now, not being people who want to throw out advice completely, we have been holding that information in an open hand and sort of feeling it out with our pigs as we go, because we've been finding quite the opposite in many ways. I'm gonna go get them hay. Do you think she's gonna be all right with you? I walked over there, she's kept eating. Their pajamas. Yeah, they, yeah. I imagine they're like two, three hours old. It maybe. One of them's injured there. One of them looks like he's got a hoof mark or something on him. Caution number one that I came across when our sow farrowed was a lot of information to say that sows are often stressed and aggressive protectors of their young and a pig's tendency to be highly strong can also mean that first time mothers sometimes eat their own babies. So we just put a lamp in there. We don't know what he's going to do. Little one right there. Good boy. Good boy. Right there under the hairs of your chinny chin chin. Mama's getting used to him. Here, pig. Here, pig. Here, pig. Here, pig. I might, I might buy us some time. Now, I can understand any mother being protective of her young. However, I also think that genetics plays an important role in the behavior and character traits of certain breeds. And one of the reasons that we decided to get the Mangalitsa breed is because innately they are known to have a very gentle nature and a calm disposition. We have seen no aggression or defensiveness, no stress or tension from our sow Patty. 
And although having just a couple of pigs means that we can get a good amount of time with hands-on, build a relationship with them and earning their trust, I would definitely pick this breed over again, having now seen for myself how friendly they are and how she has made a very attentive first-time mother. All right, are they eating? Mama, you need to lay down, but don't lay on your... So she finally laid down. One, two, three, four. Where's five at? Can you not stand up or what? Get up and turn around. Right, right down there. Right there. Yes. yes, 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 yes. To the left. To the left. Up. So close. There you go. He found. So we got to take and make a farrowing house. Keep her from sitting on her pigs. Caution number two that I read about is the risk and danger of sows killing their piglets by sitting on them or rolling on top of them during feeding. Now with this, I did have a good few moments of holding my breath the first few times that I watched her lay down to feed the babies. And we did go ahead for safety reasons and just to have that precaution and put a roll bar in her hurt. But as I watched, I observed her being super vigilant of where her piglets were and the care that she would take to slowly go down on her knees and then check again before laying down. So I would confidently say that this breed instinctively make great mothers. All right, to update everything real quick. Mom is uh, laying down, feeding her little ones. Uh, and now I got a little bar here so that it uh, hopefully it'll keep her from rolling on them if she wants to roll it might give them room to get out of the way so that's the idea and they got their heat lamp on they mean they have a heat on them so so far so good caution number three was that piglets need an external heat source and can quickly get hypothermia now, again, in commercial situations where pigs are bred to have huge litters and also stay very lean as they grow, our old world mangalitsas genetically put down a lot of insulating fat. Down here with the babies this morning. We're on day four. I was a little bit worried because last night the temperature got down to 39 degrees. So I was reading online like crazy. And apparently sows can raise the temperature around their belly by up to 40 degrees. And last night we came down twice to check on them and they were all snuggled up, actually closer to her than they were the heat lamp, so. Caution number four, an interesting one, is that piglets are born anemic and they need iron. So at two weeks old, we had the vet out to neuter the boy piglets and at the same time, he gave them all a shot of iron. However, what's interesting is that during a conversation with my stepdad, who's a retired vet, he was explaining that in fact, pigs in the wild get their iron from the soil. So what I started wondering was, is anemia in pigs only an issue with animals that are kept in confinement because they're on concrete floors where they don't have access to dirt? And as Caleb and I talked this through, he said that he had observed Patty taking regular mud baths before she actually fed the piglets. And where I was thinking that perhaps it's just a nice sort of soothing mud pack for a breastfeeding mama, perhaps as Caleb said, the coating of mud that she puts on her udders is the way that she delivers iron to the piglets who in turn have to ingest the mud as they suckle for milk. <laughs> Um, separated 
he's on the outside hanging out. And he's, he's, he's fine. Oh, and here's the other fun fact. These piglets are not his. We don't know who the father is. Yeah, it turns out she was pregnant as she arrived. And, uh, cause he can't, he can't, uh, you know, it's not his time yet. So, he's probably in puberty now, just in there, so. We'll probably be on the next episode of Maury with a DNA test, <laughs> figure out who's the daddy. So caution number five was to remove the ball. <laughs> so we did go ahead and separate Greg because we didn't want to take any undue risks. However, he has been really attentive of the piglets just through the fence. He makes the same chattering sounds with them as Patty does, which gives me hopes of them being able to be reintegrated together after just a few weeks. I've had to feed him again. He's been flipping his bucket over. And I'm thinking, well, why, well, you know, why are you being ungrateful like that? He says, uh, I'm still hungry. Oh, shh, quick, shh. Here she comes. I gotta act like I'm doing something. All I am doing is I'm making a video. So she's okay with that. You're leaving? Forever? Pack my bags. You pack your bags? The farm life just wasn't uh, too much for you. Is that right? City. You're back to the city? Okay. Okay, before I was just interrupted by, you know. Um, my point I was making was, <clears throat> he's hungry again. And it could just be, it was cold night. But uh, I was, I'm wondering, like, if he's just, he's just getting, this is kind of his coping mechanism right now. Because he's not, you know, he's not with his, with his bride. So he's, he's having to eat more. Kind of, he's trying to get his uh, comfort food in. That's what it is. It's comfort food. He didn't have his pal, his partner, his uh, his best friend's BFF by his side. So he's, you know, trying to manage that feeling, right? I think he's happier right now than he was five minutes ago, but not ultimately happy. Not until he's back with his, his special someone, his darling person. And that right, Greg, soon. One thing that has kept coming to mind during these past few weeks is that if pigs were really these awful parents who ate and squashed their young and who couldn't stay warm in winter or died from anemia, then America certainly wouldn't have the feral hog problem that it does today. Perhaps feral hogs are being so successful because innately and genetically, they know what they need better than we do. And perhaps preserving the genetics of these old world breeds by raising them on small holdings is more an important part of the big picture than we may think. Mm -hmm.